library and I was looking at some of the recent uh, projects you've had, so I tip my hat to you and uh, I'm sure you don't get enough recognition, uh, but I'm giving you a little right here. Congratulations on the terrific work you do. Uh, I was asked to talk about the Portland Pickles uh, before I talk about the Women's Collegiate uh, Softball League, and, I, and I'm happy to do that. I'm not involved with the Portland Pickles uh, any longer, but uh, I was the founder of, of that baseball team and that activity over on Walker Stadium at 92nd and Holgate. So I'm uh, happy to give a little summary of that. I must say going in, I'm gonna try to be brief. Uh, as a sportscaster, I'm used to filling time and not uh, trying to be short, but uh, I'll do my best to be succinct. Uh, the area I'm gonna cover, uh, I'll, I'll be doing just, I mean, a real quick brush of it. I'm gonna basically uh, talk about what we did to start the Portland Pickles, what we're doing to start the Women's Collegiate Softball League, and today is the official launch here with your meeting. So I'm gonna talk about things that have taken years and get it down to a couple of minutes. Uh, what we did with the Portland Pickles, Portland Pickles, 2014, I had nothing to do in life and drove down 92nd and saw an old rickety ballpark. I've never seen a ballpark I didn't like. I said, we should put something here uh, in Walker Stadium. And I had spent uh, eight years as the president of the West Coast League, a summer collegiate wood bat league. And uh, I said, let's try to put a team in Portland. Let's fix up this stadium. So we started that project. Uh, and fortunately, we were successful. Not easily, but we were successful. Uh, 2015, we really got it going. And the first games were played in 2016. One question was, what kind of name would we have for the team? Portland was easy. Pickles was hard. We came up with a list of five names. And, and they were all good. We liked them. Two of them had to do with dogs. One list of five, I wasn't that happy. I was looking about Pickles. And my wife said, that is an awful name. That's a terrible name. So I put it on the list, we had a contest and the fans selected Pickles and that's how the Portland Pickles got their name. Uh, then the next question was, what about your mascot? Uh, typically in a, something like a summer collegiate baseball league, the players come and go uh, and, and that's always the case, but your mascot doesn't. And we came up with the name Dylan uh, for the Pickles and the mascot. And to this day, uh, the focus of all the marketing of the Portland Pickles is very much on Dylan, the pickle. Uh, you see the youngster with the ball. Uh, most of the marketing is directed to families, affordable family entertainment, and, and the real focus is on youngsters and, and that smile and the baseball. And these photos all go back to our first year, 2016. Uh, really tells the story uh, of, of what it's all about and the joy and happiness you try to bring with something like the Portland Pickles. Oh, look at that, click that. And autographs, that's a typical player signing autographs. And the kids don't know uh, at, at this level if this is the major leagues or, or what this is, but they get a big kick out of getting an autograph from a player. Uh, the, the shot, the overhead shot of Walker Stadium is, is interesting. It's changed a lot just since 2016. Uh, the team's going into its seventh season now. Uh, <laughs> When I walked in there, the field was rocky and messy, and there were two sections of 400 bleachers, one off first base, one off third base. And so we had 800 seats. Uh, that was it. Uh, we did all sorts of things. The city put in a new field. We put in new fencing. We had to put in dugouts. We had to move the backstop. Uh, we had just a joyous time uh, doing that. There's the overhead. You can see the two sections of seating we had and had nothing else down to the lower lower area there. You see some asphalt. We had nothing there. We had the one building behind home plate with some uh, lavatories. The press box was condemned. The seating there was condemned. Uh, the city wouldn't put in the asphalt uh, for some reason. Uh, unfortunately, I, I love the city of Portland, but they're extremely difficult to deal with. And so we finally got the asphalt and we put in a, a trailer and a, a tent for a concession stand and did a lot of things. We 
built a berm down the left field line. Uh, we had a tent down the right field line. Now there's a berm. And uh, uh, we put it, they didn't have a scoreboard. I remember it well, because I had to pay for it, $32,000 for the scoreboard without installation. But as you can see, uh, in 2016, uh, we, had, we had some nice crowds. Uh, we played to 98% capacity and uh, it was what it was all about. Again, this is a 2016 shot. Uh, I mean, I again, I'm a ballpark lover, but uh, you know, really what we took was a, what, what I call an asset and tried to tell the city of Portland they had an asset. So why let it sit empty and rot? It was built in 1954 and now it's used. Central Catholic came to me and said, help us with the city. We want our varsity baseball team to play there. Uh, we had a lot of issues, as you can imagine. We had homeless issues. We had 68 parking spots. One night we had a crowd of 2,700. Figure out 68 parking spots wasn't going to do it. So we, we had a lot of challenges there. And the only reason I did the project was because everybody I talked to said it was impossible. It'll never work. It's a bad neighborhood. The city won't be helpful. Uh, people won't come to your games and on and on and on and on. And uh, I'm still to this day flabbergasted at how successful it was in the first season and how successful it has been. Uh, so that, that gives you a little history. And again, the pickles are hugely successful uh, to this day, certainly more successful than I ever thought they would be. Uh, the Women's Collegiate Softball League is really an offshoot. Uh, I sold my interest in the uh, pickles in 2017, so I haven't been involved for some time. Uh, but I'm, 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 I, I look like a retired guy, and I look like a guy who is always looking for something. So I've come up with another project that uh, is kind of interesting to me. It's almost an offshoot of the men's college summer wood bat baseball. It's all about women. It's about opportunity. It's about inclusion. Uh, the men play ball in the spring in their schools for decades. They've had all sorts of leagues in the summer that they go to and they play to get better, to have fun. Uh, no such opportunity for women. They just haven't had it. Uh, and so I was sitting in March of 2020 and decided let's do this in Portland. Portland needs anything it could get. Uh, my first idea was to have four teams in four ballparks around metropolitan Portland. I found out to my chagrin there were only really two places in all of Portland, Oregon, where you could play softball and draw people. One is at Pacific University in Forest Grove. The other is Irv Lind Stadium, where all of the games for the Women's Collegiate Softball League are going to be played. Uh, we're going to start, uh, we, the, the goal was to play softball in 2022 uh, with COVID and everything else. Uh, I, I'm a guy that likes to take a lot of time on projects and get the infrastructure down, get the foundation so it'll work. Uh, we're going to have three teams in 2023. They're each going to play 28 games. We're going to start this summer in July and have an all-star softball festival. It's three games, three nights, July 15th, 16th, and 17th. Uh, to give you a quick skim of the league, this is not a rec league. This is not a throw it together league and play out of Delta Park. Uh, this is a professionally operated uh, professional league. It's just that the players are amateurs. We sell tickets to the games. Uh, we have entertainment. There'll be a bounce house, clowns, mascots, on-field events, uh, games, music, uh, much of the same format as the Portland Pickles. Uh, great food, great drink. Uh, you come to a WCSL game at Irv Lynn Stadium, it's going to be a party. And uh, as much as anything, we talk about fun. Love to talk about fun. That's what it's all about is fun. And uh, it's just it's just the, the way it is. The, the, the ideal situation is mom and dad and Jessica and Jason leave the ballpark and they each have something in their hand. Uh, they have no idea what happened on the field, but they know they had a great time and it was a lot of fun and they plan on coming back. And, and that's the heartwarming part of it. That's what it's all about. Uh, we were really, really lucky. Uh, these projects are, are, are always a little surprising. Uh, 
just to, to go back, one of the things with the Portland Pickles, when we started them, we thought that concessions would be a struggle. We thought, okay, we can probably sell tickets, but we'll have a terrible time with food and beverage. Uh, again, we figured only people would only come from a 15 minute radius. We sold more beer with the Portland Pickles than you could ever imagine. And, and uh, you know, the clientele was, you know, not, you know, not all highbrow by any stretch of the imagination, but we were totally surprised at how well we did uh, in concessions. Now, here we are with the women, and, and I went out in the fall, September, October, November, basically, and went out in the corporate world and said, hey, we're, we're starting this league, Women's Collegiate Softball League. It's about women. It's about giving women a chance. It's about letting kids come to games, especially girls, to see role models. And I, I'm still stunned at the great reaction from the corporate world. Uh, Beneficial State Bank came on right away. They're the presenting sponsor. Their big thing was we, we're into the community. We're, we're helping women. We're all for it. So Beneficial State Bank said, we'll be your, your uh, presenting sponsor. Uh, Coca-Cola came in. Uh, Anheuser-Busch came in. Our friends at uh, Pizza Schmiza came in. Adventist Health Hospital came in. And I just kind of quit because I'm going to do most of the sales uh, next fall. But the support for the concept of uh, some affordable family entertainment based around women uh, has really surprised me at how great that's been. Uh, we had to come up with a name for the league. <laughs> and uh, I sat there and I said, well, you know, we, we're not sure exactly how the league's going to unfold, but I probably don't want to be the Portland League or the Oregon League or the Northwest League. And there are only two leagues we had heard about for women just starting in the last year. One was the Gulf Coast League in Florida. The other was the uh, 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 Carolina College League in Columbia, South Carolina. So I said, well, well, we'll just be worldwide. We'll be the Women's Collegiate Softball League and not have any uh, uh, limitations in terms of our breadth and what we present to the public. We came up, we, I use the term we rather loosely, hardly any of this have I done uh, with the logo and came up and kind of turned things around from what everybody's talking about nowadays uh, and, and made it women opportunity uh, and inclusion. The other thing we had to do was typically, we, as we did with the pickles, we did a name the team contest. Uh, the only contest we're going to do here is uh, name your mascot. We're going to have a league mascot. And this summer, we're going to have a name the mascot contest. But we came, we decided, let's go do the team names now and, and get it out there so we have more to show the public, uh, especially the corporate world, but the, the general public also. So we came up, we, we fiddled with names forever, as you can imagine, page after page after page after page of names. And the concept was to play Every team would, would not play in different ballparks, but every game, every team would play at Irv Lind, uh, which is not a totally new concept, but it, it's been used very little. So we said no, no buses, no hotels, no travel, three teams, all games at Irv Lind. And so we said, what are the names going to be? And, and we started coming up with names. The first name we came up with was the Mist, uh, the Oregon Mist. And uh, then you have to decide what's, what's it gonna look like. And the, these uniforms are a takeoff on the, uh, all, all I did by the way was make suggestions. So there's obviously a graphics person is talented as opposed to me. Uh, th this is a takeoff on the Cincinnati Reds interestingly enough. And I should tell you, going back, the Portland Pickles, it, it may not mean much to people, but when you're putting it together, you have to decide what colors you're going to use. And I'm a hockey guy, so the Portland Pickles colors are the colors of the Hartford Whalers of the National Hockey League, who moved uh, to Carolina and went out of business. But we took their colors, which were navy, green, and a little gray, and those are the Pickles colors. These colors our, our take off of the Cincinnati Reds, who often have had red pinstripe uniforms. So what we're doing here is uh, the home uniform is a uh, red pinstripe for the mist. Uh, the pants are the same, white with red pinstripes. 
And then when they're the road team at, at a game, they go to a solid red jersey that says Oregon. So it's the Oregon Mist. Then the second team we came up with, we came up with the name Puddles. And uh, we went with Portland Puddles. The, the concept here was a takeoff on the LA Dodgers. If you if you know baseball, you can see the, the Dodgers in the in the white uniform. Uh, the, the the logo you can't really see here, but on each sleeve there's two kids yellow uh, uh, boots, and so it's very much oriented to kids. And the graphics people tell me that the yellow is very much oriented to things that kids are used to seeing with the color yellow. But the logo again is two yellow boots. And uh, the puddles is the home uniform. Then when they're uh, the road team at a game, they go to the Navy uh, where it says Portland. We seem to think that the Portland puddles home jersey is the nicest of our jerseys. Uh, you guys can do what you want with it. Uh, then we came up with, a, we decided we went with Oregon and we went with Portland. So what are we gonna come up with? We went up with Willamette, River City. And finally, we just went with Rose City and decided we, if we had mist and we had puddles, we better have some raindrops. And uh, these are, this is a takeoff of the Houston Astros. Uh, the gray, gray home uniform, they have gray pants, and then the gray pants go with a road uniform of the orange. Again, it's the uh, uh, takeoff of the Houston Astros. And the question is, what do we have next? Aha, Irv Lynn Stadium. Believe it or not, Irv Lynn Stadium was built in 1948. So uh, it's almost as old as I am, not quite, but it's an old ballpark. Uh, I really like it. Uh, I went there only because my daughter played softball at Lincoln High School and they had some games there. Otherwise, I would not have known that Irv Lind existed at Halsey and 57th. The condition of Irv Lind Stadium is much better than Walker Stadium when we took that over and made it the home of the Portland Pickles. Um, this would be a nice stadium for baseball, by the way, but the trees are in the way and the fences are too close. Uh, in this stadium, we've, well, we've been working a long time with the city. We have a, a partnership with the city to, to, I'd say, be the primary tenant here. Uh, Warner Pacific University is, for the first time, going to play their home games here this summer. Uh, there are... Uh, I, I joke when I started a team in suburban St. Louis many years ago, one of my wife's friends' husbands, <laughs> we said, well, we're putting a baseball team together in a stadium. He said, I guess all you really have to do is come up with a schedule. And we've laughed ever since because there, there's, it's like any business, there's more to it than, than you can imagine. Uh, but when we got into it at Walker Stadium, everything we touched caused trouble because they had no ADA, so they had no disability stuff. So everything we did was uh, catastrophic. We didn't have much money and, and don't have much money for this project. Uh, it's basically me starting it. And my wife says, you can do it, but you can't spend any money. So that's always interesting. Start a business without money. I've done it before, I'll do it again. And that's, that's, that's the challenge, do it without money. But we had to spend a lot of money at Walker Stadium. We had crazy things like if we had a dugout a foot below field level, the city was all upset because they said that water would go to the ocean. And so we couldn't recess the dugouts. Uh, they had a, an IOA that had been at Walker Stadium for 54 years, I'm sorry, since 1954. And we had to widen it by a foot to meet modern standards and it went on and on and on to hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, that we didn't have. The end result is great. So the, the reason I tell you that story is when we walked into Irv Lynn Stadium, it was obvious there were a lot of things we could do to make it nicer. But every single thing we've wanted to do to make Irv Lynn Stadium nicer triggers an ADA situation and tons of money, tons of permitting, tons of round and round with the city of Portland. So we're not making any improvements at all, but it's actually a pretty nice stadium uh, as it is. And it has uh, one section of bleachers. There's 688 
seats there. Uh, the capacity is 1,050, so the city says. I have no idea how they have 688 bleacher seats and the capacity is 1,050. But this is where we're going to play. Uh, there's not much parking. We really like the neighborhood, uh, despite recent things that have happened. I think it's a great location, centrally located, uh, and it's really appealing to fans 15 to 20 minutes from that site, which obviously is pretty much all of Northeast Portland. And uh, it's interesting with the pickles, we use the 15 minute. You know, we thought anybody that would come to a game would come from within 15 minutes of 92nd and Holgate. We had season ticket holders from Vancouver, from Wilsonville. So uh, we were a little surprised. Uh, I mentioned that all we're gonna do in 2022 is have an all-star uh, festival, three games, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights, July 15th, 16th, and 17th. Tickets go on sale later this spring. Uh, and we've got the, the jerseys uh, set up. The league colors are, are sort of blue and yellow. So this is the first, first look at our uniform tops or jerseys for the All-Star Weekend uh, in July. Having said that, uh, I have nothing more to tell you. I have a world full of sports and marketing and uh, things I could get into, but uh, I don't know how we are on time. There it is. I'm supposed to be done at 12.30 or so, and it's 12.30 or so. So that's... Uh, Ken, we've, we, we've got a few minutes for some questions, and if you stop screen sharing, we can see everybody and see who has a question. Players be recruited for this league. That's been our biggest surprise. Uh, there you go. There we go. Somebody did something. Congratulations and thank you. Um, we thought getting players would be the easiest thing. Uh, on the men's side, there are players, there's never, there, it's endless guys, 18 to 21, who want to play baseball. They'll go anywhere, anytime, any day to play baseball. We thought that we'd have, you know, there's 1,500 colleges mm -hmm. playing women's softball. We thought we'd have tons of players. And I talked to some of their starting the, the third or fourth league in Wichita, Kansas. And, and all the college coaches say, boy, this is great. The girls need a place to play in the summer. You'll have plenty of players. I said, how are you doing? He says, we're having a terrible time getting players. And, and we're finding it difficult to get players also. So uh, I've got 40 schools, mostly in the Pacific Northwest, that I've been dealing with for uh, two and a half months and have had six contacts with each of them trying to get players. Uh, you know, and it's pretty much a networking thing, but I think the problem, the problem we're having is college softball coaches, for some reason, well, they've never, never had their girls play anywhere in the summer, so it's never been an issue. And they seem to be quite reticent to say to one of their players, I would like you to play softball this summer and my suggestion is you play in the Women's Collegiate Softball League, which, or, and in this case, we're just getting the girls for three games. And uh, the coaches seem to be very reluctant to be that suggestive with their players. So it, it's, that's, that's been the only thing that has been challenging for us. Could I please be granted the ability to record this meeting as well? We'll probably use a portion. Sure. Anybody can can record the meeting, right, Jim? No problem. Yeah, no problem. Go ahead. Work, works for me. Asset to treasure. How will players be recruited? Will this league impact the players' ability to play for their collegiate teams? No, there's no uh, no impact whatsoever. It's uh, they're amateurs and they can play wherever they want to in the summer, as long obviously as they're as they're not paid. I think that's the end of my list. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Could I? I'm sorry. Hey, uh, John Goodwin here from KGW. Can I, uh, now that you're full screen, <laughs> would, wouldn't you mind um, perhaps mentioning once again just the importance of having this league for for young women and, and the importance that it is to have young girls uh, be able to yeah. go watch role models play? Yeah, I can do that. And and you guys have some clips already. Do you know that in the media kit? Got it. Okay. So you're looking for the uh, op why why it's an opportunity? 
Yeah, you Sorry. mentioned it whenever you mentioned it when you're sharing your screen. If you could just now that you're now that you're full screen on my screen, uh, if, if you don't mind just saying what Do kind of this for for young girls to have these, oh, these players to look up to role models. And I'm I'm at 15 seconds, am I, John? Uh, yeah, I've been I've been around the block, 15 or less, right? Uh, we think it's really important for these uh, college women to get to play in the summer. And it's an opportunity for younger girls to look up to role models, maybe never play softball, but at least see the opportunities that exist in life. As they say, just tell me what else you want and I'll do it. You're good? Hey, Ron, you had a question? I have a semi-serious question. Uh -oh. I'm, I'm surprised that none of your teams use the Michigan colors. Well, that's a, that's a good question. The Milwaukee Brewers use the maize and blue. And, uh, I, I, you see it once in a while. I don't think it's a, the greatest combination I've ever seen, although it does look pretty nice on those football helmets. I must say that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. Uh, I, I, have no, I, I have no idea, Ron. I'm as true as blue as I am, excuse the expression, to the maize and blue. Uh, that didn't, it didn't get into the women's collegiate softball league, nor did it get into the uh, into the Portland Pickles. It's a good idea, though, and it's the first time I've ever thought about it. Maybe next time. For those of us who are used to green and yellow and orange and black, we're, we're always looking out for those color schemes. To see yeah, well, you're, you're, that's one of the first things we do. We look around and say what, what colors are being used. And... Uh, because we figure we're not going to use them. The first team I did was in St. Louis, and the St. Louis Cardinals were basically navy and red. We went with the Chicago White Sox colors in St. Louis with basically gray, black, and white. And here, you're clearly not going to use uh, yellow and green. I'm, I'm not a fan of yellow. <laughs> I hate to say it, I'm not a fan of yellow and green. It's not, it's not, the, the Oakland A's look is not, not a great look. It's, far as I'm concerned, but uh, that's, you, hey, you're not going to change tradition, right? That's right. But well, that's a, that is an interesting question because it's an aspect of when you put something like this together, and as I mentioned, part of it, you're looking at what are youngsters going to like? And, and when we asked the graphics guy, one of my partners said, I, I don't like that puddles, I don't like the yellow with the navy and the red, and the graphics guy came back, and I, I don't remember exactly what he said, but this character and Superman or whatever, they always have the, that yellow. That's why I put the yellow in because at least subliminally, it'll it'll be attractive to, to kids. So there's a lot more. <laughs> there's a lot more to this than making a schedule, believe it or not. Oh, Ken, I want I want to thank you um, for for being with us and for talking about the pickles a bit, but also talking about this league for women um, and. Um, we're, we're, we, we also um, are committed to inclusion and equity. And so we really respect what you're doing and, and support that. And, and thank you for doing that in our community and for, for, for your work on baseball stadiums and pushing the city about that too, um, because it needs pushes where we can push. Um, and we appreciate your being here with us today. So and thank I, you very much. I, and I appreciate the time and we hope uh, we'll see you all at the uh, Irv Lynn Stadium with if we get these games going. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And you're sure welcome to stay for the rest of our meeting if you'd like to. If you have other stuff you need to do, we also understand that. I'm doing